Good. Mel Dean. Welcome to uh, welcome to Hey Chower. Thank and, you very uh, much. How did you find the icebreaker? Icebreaker was good. Was he good? Yeah, it was. Are you being generous? <laughs> no, but I uh, I didn't know about who influenced me. Well, everybody influences you as you're getting older, whether it be a certain coach or a teacher or you're picking things up along the way. If that's the way you're inclined, I think. I think yeah, you don't see an old stupid person. That's a good point. I think when you get one of the questions is who are your inspirations? Yeah, I think they're probably thousands of yeah. inspirational people in someone's life yes. I, the question really is who's your most memorable yeah. don't you or who do you think impacted you most yeah yeah for sure I think and for yeah. some people like sports stars or you know well known personalities if other people it can be like school teacher yes you know yeah some, someone that nobody knows so yeah but somebody if somebody backs you that's when you when you're maybe not 100% sure and someone backs you and says look do you do what you do and you're like oh I think I can do something pretty well because honestly I, I played well for coaches to say go on do what you do and then you go oh I just play you know I loved it do you think there's still as much freedom afforded in sports people these days than there was back when you started when you started playing? Because um, when you it was pro, it was pro rugby when you started, wasn't it? For your entire career when you yes it was pro right yes yeah. it was yeah when I left uni I was straight into professionalism yeah um, but I I worked on the building sites as a youngster and in the pubs because that run dad running pubs. Um, so I knew training every day and playing. I mean, oh, if I if I did this for a, if I did this for a short amount of time and I had to work my beans off further on down the line, that wasn't wasn't going to be a problem because I knew I was living the dream of playing my favourite sport. You know, so that was that's that was good for me. I, I knew I was I was actually living the dream. How many lads? If you had said to me as a 10 year old okay you're going to be a professional professional rugby player and you'll be like yes bang that's a home run job you know so even though it had its it had its ups and downs when you're playing or you're not or you're injured or you're, you know but luckily I was pretty good injury wise you know when you first when you, when you got your first professional contract yes Richmond Richmond did that change you, did that change the way you were motivated to play the game compared to before when you weren't getting paid um, no there was just more hanging on it because you knew that there was a two year contract and then oh yeah you're comfortable enough two years and you go I've got another year after this and then there's some money issues and then you know, the club has got money issues um, I'm going to have to this is a platform for me to be seen by other people so I better I better perform every session every match and still not let the team down and still be a team and you so know, the pressure oh, ramps up when yeah. you get that first contract and the reason yeah. I asked is I always I, I, since discovering now how 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 young and how much at the grassroots level in football money is a factor mm. um, you know seven eight year old players in a local club side money is a, money is a factor and you don't get that in rugby <clears throat> and I wonder how how that financial part of the motivation impacts performance and motivation of, of professional players at, at the top of their game in between r- football and rugby it's something you wouldn't be able to measure and, and analyse obje- objectively I think it'd be really difficult yeah. but there's definitely going to be an impact there but money is not so much an issue I'd say when they have no value of money when they're that young that they don't have the value of money they're playing and they want to be the best so they're get, it's the the feedback is is the thing it's not it's not the money because they're obviously looked after by their parents and they're like bankrolled doing all their bits and pieces so they don't really think the money then at that stage I don't think but maybe for future reference when they're like 15 and 16 and they're in a young contract oh I could make a I could make a living out of this even like someone someone only said it the other week that the the keeper the fourth choice keeper at I don't know Chelsea is on 20 grand a week or something ridiculous really? and he, or 10 I don't know what was said but um, yeah they, they don't have to play they just get the money rolls in but how unfulfilling is that mm. you're not playing but you're getting a, whether it's you get a wage or do you want to be the best you can be so you play with the best mm. yeah so is the reason you ended up going into rugby as opposed to doing something like I, uh, um, 
uh, Gaelic football. Was that because you were you were in London at the time? Uh, no, age? no, I was. I started rugby at seven in in Longford. Yeah, and uh, my best pal had been to the rugby a couple of weeks, and he said, "Oh, you really enjoy it, Longford, Longford." Longford. Why do I feel like I've been there? Well, I went to school in a place called Longford in Wales, but there's a Longford in Ireland, right? Yes, in the where, middle, where? middle of Ireland, right in the middle of Ireland. Well, it's just north of Athlone, which would be deemed the middle of Ireland. Maybe I went there as a kid. Right. <laughs> yes. um, yeah, but Longford, I started there. My best pal was Tony Smith, and uh, he was there playing rugby, and he said, do you want to come along? So I went and I found out I was pretty good at it because I used to box as a little fella, and you could hand off as underage then. So give me the ball straight arm bang in the face young lads would be out of all bogeys on my hand I was like I'm good at this <laughs> so so yeah that was the start of it I suppose yeah, yeah. What, what was the what was the contrast between when you moved across London living in London and living in Ireland like um, you came across at 12 right yeah, so you got a yeah. memory of Ireland, we were Ireland yeah. and then was it central London you are in I was in I came to Northwood initially and then Ryslip is where I was living okay so the, the school was in Rickmansworth and um Obviously, when I came to England, I was an Irish this and Irish that. So you had to get in a couple of rows to like make a name for yourself. 80s. I was 88, 80s. yeah. The height of the troubles as well. Yeah. But that was dramas. Irish this, and I, yeah. But, um, but I, you know, you, I, I, I say I said this a couple of times to different people. If you get the name of an early riser, you can lie in bed all day. So if someone deems you, so if, if you get the name of some little fight, people don't want to fight you because your your game. You know, if, if people see it once or twice, or oh, he fights, he doesn't mind fighting. Don't don't upset him. Reduces the likelihood of conflict. Yeah, you just have to front up a couple of times, and then nobody likes a right hand in the mouth uh, unless people have been drinking. Yeah, <laughs> unless, yeah. my yeah. uncle uh, he's like six foot nine. Oh Jesus! But built like a brick shit house. Um, he used to play American football for a, for a, t- a London Jets yes. throw base. He lives, he lives down in Staines. And he he says to me when I was younger, and I thought, that doesn't make any sense. He said, whenever he would go out drinking, he's, he's massive. You wouldn't, yes. he's huge. He's just a man mountain. Whenever you go out drinking, there's always, almost always, someone who, who picks on him yes. for a scrap because they get a drink in him and they've got Dutch courage, you see a big guy and they feel threatened for no other reason yeah, than their own true. insecurities. Yeah. And they go starting on him, it's like yeah. a fucking problem. Yeah. I bet he doesn't have money sober, you know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah sober. exactly. But I, I, I used to have a pal, he's in, he's incidentally in that loan now, but he was, he's six foot eight and um, a big unit and people used to pick on him as well, but he, he wasn't able to fight. You, when you're that, unless you're trained to fight and you're that long limbed they can get in on top of you pretty quickly mm. and paste you but um, yeah yeah uh, we were talking on the icebreaker what were we talking oh the book you were reading yes and the book you were reading and it was, a, it was you have to say the name of it actually but it was about how your mental ability or your mental yeah, when the, state the quality yes. of your mental state can impact the risk and probability of your physical state becoming yes. degraded when you the, get ill if, yeah. you, if your brain's ill your body gets yeah. ill when, what was the name of that book? when the body says no mm. so how can we how can we read that what led you to that book um, that Gabor Mate is um, he's, he's very I've listened to a couple of those audibles with him and he's he's very good very, very easy listening and it makes you think needless to say The Road Less Travelled would be the first kind of self-help book that a lot of all I read was my first kind of self everybody has a reason for being the way they are whether they did something as a youngster and they got a positive response for doing that and then it's kind of bang that's the that's the reboot that's needless to say that's needless why I probably fought a lot as a youngster because I was a fat little turnip and um and someone said, so, someone said, you fat something. I turned around, I ploughed into them, I absolutely tore into them. And then everyone looked at me after that, I was like, don't say things to him or he will fight. So that was the first time? Yeah, and then the fear factor, everyone had a little fear factor. I'd be wary of, and I, I, I liked it. I liked it. There was, a, there was respect given to, and needless to say, I got that in rugby for 
smashing into people, running hard, hitting hard with everything. I could. I wasn't particularly big, but if anyone was running at me, they were getting emptied. I didn't care what. I just throw myself at them all together. He said I was knocked out a few times, but um, yeah, I, I would. I would be deemed not particularly nice to play against. Definitely, mm. but I'd be, I'd be fair. I'd be fair, um, but I would. I would be deemed, yeah, a bit of an angry little. Why? Why not nice? Because I was horrible to attack. I would looking. run. No, I'd run. I'd run and I'd try. I'd be so aggressive. Arrgh, top as everything I could do to get through that contact. I want to win the collision all the time. Win, win, win the collision. Yeah, there's something in oh, again. There's there there is something that sets you can look at two or three different players it probably happens well, in, in any contact sport right? and you can have two players arguably who look of the same physical ability the same size maybe they're doing 100 metres in the same or 30 metres yeah. in the same time right except one is this person and the other one's Jason Robinson yes you know and they're on paper they're both exactly the same but Robinson is at stat wise is breaking more tackles he's scoring yeah. more tries you go hang on they're the same thing but look at the way they're conducting themselves yes. in the crash ball or whatever they're doing yeah. it, it's, it's the mindset completely changes the ability on the pitch doesn't it well I played a sale with Jason Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, okay, I, right, I, okay. I, I, I plucked him out of thin air. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, okay. And I, I was in the first game when he played Union, when he came from Leaguey to Union, and um, yeah, everyone wanted to drift on to him. It was great for, for me, because everyone thought, I've got to get out to tackle Jason. Jeez, if they get the ball to him, it's like, ah, everyone has to jump on Jason. But it gave everybody else space, because their mind said, Jesus, I've got to get to him. But then they left gaps for people to run straight, and Charlie Hodge trying to go up straight down the middle, or whoever was playing at the time, Brian Redpath, or any of the other players. That obviously used Jason as a foil. But I remember, I remember he was unbelievable for beating people, Jason. But there was one England game that he was at 15, and the England boys set it up as a, a scrum midfield against France. And they left, it was 9-15 wing, and Jason was on was 15, running down the blind against two defenders, and then the winger was staying out in the winger, and Jason did his normal little check-check, little step-step, and they didn't move, and he went down the middle, and then around the 15, and then scored between the posts. And that Monday, after that game, we were doing one-on-ones in five-meter channel, right? One, You think, yeah, he's not going to get around me here. And he jump. So as soon as you jump, you sit down. You have to try not to sit down. But if you sit down and you go to the heel, onto your heels, you're, you're goosed. He's going to go back. He's going to look this way and he's going to go that way. Or he's going to look that way and go this way. And then he's going to go around you. And as he's going around you, you're, sh- you're shouting at him like, <laughs> fuck <her." laughs> And, um, and Jason, he'd be like, hee hee, a little scuttle. Does this, you know, but his top end wasn't unbelievably fast, but he could go step and he's had his top end. Like, great lad. What a top human. Really good fun. Do you think you can train that mindset to someone who's got that those physical capabilities, doesn't have the mental ability to be able to be that line breaker that's that's something special something else do you think you can train that mindset and i don't mean just in rugby i mean in anything which requires physical ability combined with mental ability to be something different do you think you can train that mindset it's it's it is a tough one but they have to do the things you ask and get a positive result if they get positive results from running those lines and running with that intent and they break break gain I, I can do that and that that self belief in the player it adds to everything in their game that they'll try another pass or they'll try a kick or you know, a step it adds to the whole game if they start doing a little bit better on one thing it it, it grows 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 because as lads you see I need to say I bet you played with lads you thought Jesus, they're great. They they can pass or they're quick as or they're great tacklers or they didn't have the, the mindset to 
and th maybe their bodies let them down but at the time that their bodies were letting down they were discovering women and drink and good times and they weren't as focused as maybe they wanted or needed to be and they let it get away from them you know what I mean Just, uh, I've, I train lots of young lads that are so talented and some some of them are, are putting their heads down and some of them it's it's harder you have to you have to keep the stick to them so to speak you know what I mean you have to you have to be on them but it's 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 their choice it's if they want to go with their pals they want to go with their pals but they're that much further back like Daley Thompson used to train on Christmas day or whatever and they said like that I'm extra I'm an extra head session ahead of them I'm an extra head of them. whoever's they're not training today they're not training today but I'm not trained you know train smart not necessarily just train mediocre train every day but you train specifically goals mm -hmm. and, then, and then you're just you're, you're like to quote um, Goggins you're like bulletproof in your mind if you've all that sweat equity you're training training you know you didn't just do it for nothing sweat equity yeah okay, yeah I like that yeah 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 yeah. Um, when did you start PT in? Um, I started PT in as a fifteen-year-old because really, yeah, and the, yeah. The people, you started training people yes. when you were fifteen. Yeah, because oh. they'd see me training and they'd say, "Oh, my daughter wants to pass the the um, police cadets test. Is there any chance you could help train her or whatever?" That's when it started. You know, and people used to see. I'd be super enthusiastic in the pub. <laughs> I, I was downstairs in the cellar there'd be a bag hanging punch bag I'd be pressed up in between um, kegs I would be curling gas bottles you so know. your dad was a publican in London yes ah, I didn't yeah. realise when that. He, he left when when he left America he came back to, to London and right. set up uh, right. yeah, set right. up a pub here so actually we, that's, a, that's a thing I said to dad that's what would make you <clears throat> um just one one question I said to dad and it changed everything when dad I said because dad was going back to America because he had a pub set up in America the, the spinning wheel in a story in Queens and I said to dad um, and I didn't want him to go needless to say and I said do you have to go and he said the only thing you have to do is die he never went back to America for well, he didn't go back to him to see him until he saw my sister like, 10 years later. He dropped the pub. He, he changed stayed. his mind because you asked him not to go. I said that to go. Holy shit. So that, that honestly, that's actually giving me the, the down through my body. I honestly. can feel it, mate. Yeah, can you feel it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. that, that, yeah. Oh my good. How old were you when you asked him that? I was, I was 14. Yeah. I said, do you have to go? What a dude. Yeah. Yeah, and he said, you know, the only thing you have to do is die, yeah. And that, I remember that, and that was like, and so for me to be able to have that power to say that to him and him to change his world on the drop of a hat, bang. Then went, and we dad set up the pub in, in Wilsden, and um, I was that's when I was training and people would ask me for advice and, and everybody come and train with me because that's, I love training. I, I trained like a professional long before I was a professional. Who's, who did you first teach? Who's your first job? Probably unpaid. Who's your first, who um, did you first train? What was her name? Shit. This is the, the police cadet girl. Yeah, I can't remember <laughs> her name. Um, I honestly, the, her mom and dad used to come into the pub and I, I trained, I can't remember How old was she? Same well, she, she was no she was older because she was going into cadets so police cadets was that 16, 17, 18 yeah, maybe okay yeah that little bit older because they had to have a, a certain time to do 5k in or 3k in or whatever it was and she wasn't necessarily a runner so I um, I pushed her on a bit so your knowledge of training yourself up to that point what was how had you built that knowledge of training out um, as, as in Longford I boxed Gaelic rugby School. There was no internet back then. No, there's no. <laughs> no, there wasn't. And I, but I just, I love training, and I used to box a lot. Uh, but I, I was, I was goose from training. There was a boxing club in Ryslip, and that was um, Monday, Wednesday, and the rugby was Tuesday, Thursday. And I was coming home from school, just <laughs> collapsing. Yeah, and, yeah, school, the school work kind of took a, a, a backward step, and I was training all the time, basically, and then working on Saturdays and 
rugby on Sundays and yeah it was just um, but it was they were my people if you know what I mean they, and they respected me because I smashed people so you were learning to motivate people from the age of 15 basically yeah that's a different upbringing that that's a different way to grow up isn't it um, but yeah but working in the pubs with dad actually that's that's the madness when you're in the pub and dad's the manager and then there's fights in the pub and then they obviously they, they want to brain the manager and so I I'm watch obviously I'm sober as dad's sober and you're in fights with your dad but your dad a fighter as well is he yeah. oh yeah that's that's, where, that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's actually where I got it really dad used to be on the doors in nightclubs in London before managing the crown in Cricklewood which is synonymous <clears throat> with the Irish in London so um, yeah so yeah we used to get this very bizarre fighting people with your dad really why, bizarre why, why is it bizarre because the, you know that they want to kill your dad so you're plowing into people and, and trying to close doors and don't <laughs> don't let and you know that it's all set up that if you pull the door they have nothing to grip on the door there's no handle on the Why outside would they be of the kicking door. off uh, drink obviously and then dad would never had any problems in the pub he would sit out get out and then obviously they'd take dad and you say well you're just going to grab his legs okay and I grabbed he'd be going out backwards and then he'd be like, what? what's going on and I'd have a hold of their legs get out pull the doors closed and then if you were if you were the other side of the window they'd be like yeah yeah you you come on but if you're not there if you disappear from the window and you go back to the pub and you're working they'd be like I'll get you I'll come back and then yeah uh, uh, uh. <laughs> there's yeah, nothing, yeah. to, nothing left nothing left to have that conflict again so that's that's end up why I end up when I go with my pals that I used to be at school with here in England my nickname was Robo Twat right <laughs> why is that why is Robo that? Twat because if there's any problems or anything if you mail do something because obviously I'm in the pub all the time and I'm always there's conflict oh, in the there's pub there's a problem with that though yeah, there's a problem with that yeah I'm, I'm sober as a judge who I'll say excuse me yeah what's the problem okay hang on just stay there a second and I'll take someone away from them so you just have to they can't as long as they can't see them because the eye the contact is like yeah yeah <laughs> you know all that the shine. problem with that is is that when when there's a group of friends and one of that group of friends is nails like hard as nails then it emboldens the friends to be yeah. less risk uh, what, to uh, more averse. risk averse yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. it Mel I'm, I'm with you yeah. Mel I said, no you're not with me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not with me yeah no no Mel I'm with you I'm with you I saw you hitting that bag Mel whoa <laughs> I don't care if you saw me hitting that I don't want to fight don't get us into trouble mm. you know so um, I remember the big lad actually one time in Watford got us into trouble well someone was calling him a, some names or whatever and he said Mel I'm having this and I was like Ian forget about it don't just, let's just go fuck oh, Mel I'm having this and two minutes later he's getting his head weaved into a freaking doorway and I was like I can't leave him get kicked in I can't leave it so I ran over bang and I hit one fella and I pulled the jacket off the other fella and I started smashing into him and then he heard the police whistle the oh. police are coming oh Jesus and I had this colourless shirt on a white colourless shirt linen it was trendy then don't look at me like that right <laughs> it was trendy then and then this fella went and whipped off my, ripped the shirt off me I was left a copper no 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 there was oh, yeah, one yeah. of the other fellas that was fighting yeah. I was left with just the, the two cuffs <laughs> two cuffs <laughs> like a naked butler <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then and then this, this I was like who are they going to arrest Have, who are they going to arrest the fellow with no top on no, surely so I was like on my toes <laughs> running away running away went back into the car because obviously I'm driving doesn't drink drives got the, went to the car got a black jersey on came back was watching what was going on the fella I'd flattened in the doorway was in an ambulance oh no and I was like <laughs> and so Ian was arrested by the police officer and taken away and then needless to say they had tricked me and when I went home that night or whatever Ian pretended he was still in the in the, um, in the police station and he said Mel I'm going to have to tell them I was like Ian don't tell them I was trying to protect you you dickhead I said don't fight he said I'm going to have to tell them Mel I was like Ian please don't I, I was a professional at that yeah. stage I was just a professional and um, 
and then he walked out from behind he was in a toilet hiding and he came out I was like you motherfucker yeah exactly but yeah so um, I, I don't want to fight but I'm, I'm pretty handy man mm. yeah different different subjects slightly so you started training people that that young um, and what late 80s in the 90s started it off have you seen a have you noticed any change in the way that your clients customers are motivated these days compared to then especially at any change over the last 10 15 years i in my head i'm thinking tiktok era instagram reels era has has changed why people are doing physical activities and wanting to get fit not that uh, that's such a bad thing but yeah well, well have you seen having having big glutes is that you know that obviously been part of the training but i love when the when people point and say look i've gone fat here and i want you to take away the fat here and the fat <laughs> yeah, here yeah. people still think you can target my, my fat loss like that <laughs> just here yeah just yeah, here. Just there, yeah i'm great everywhere else and the classic of the women look i don't want big shoulders i get really masculine you know <laughs> We get really mad. And he's like, what? There's lads trying to get shoulders all over the country. Like thousands of lads. And they're specifically training shoulders to get massive shoulders. And they can't get them, but you're going to get them with a couple of sessions with me. Is that what you're telling me? Oh, you must hear that a lot. I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. But, um, but it's consistency. It is. Consistency is key for people to come in and train and feel good. But, I, but what about the motivation of people now compared to motivation? Oh, yeah, yeah, How day. has it changed? Has it changed the way you've needed to do things um, and market yourself? Well, I didn't have to market myself. I mean, I, to be fair, when I finished playing rugby and I was doing the strength and conditioning for the rugby club, that was on the pretense that they'd pay me, but I'd, I'd be able to use the facilities to PT people. Um, and so that's... Was it Richmond? In Richmond, yeah. yeah. And so they, they sent out a couple of emails to a, a few people and some members um, said, oh yeah, I'd like to have a bit of PT. And then I ended up going to people's houses. So I was traveling. It was an unbelievable amount of traveling at the start. And, um, and but luckily, uh, I, I feel that people like to train with me so I can kind of not train the negative ones. So I don't see any, I, the only ones I want to train are the ones I want to train that they come to me is great. And because if they're negative, I don't want anything to do with you how negative are they though if they're coming to you to want to get trained anyway no it starts off with a positive uh, oh, surely that yeah but listen <laughs> if i said to you okay let's start with let's start with this move i'm not good at that okay bang there's a negative one i've just thrown that out there immediately <laughs> there's a red flag and oh, do we have to start with that bang there's another red flag whoa you're on thin ice just do as you're told do the best you can be positive and we're going to fly. Mm. I suppose you would get, maybe you would, it's a higher likelihood of having that if someone is forcibly being told they need to go and get some personal training. I don't know. Maybe yes. maybe someone who's a personality or actor getting shit for a role yes. or some other reason. You know, hey, motherfucker, it's in your contract for X, Y, Z. Weight, height, look, ability, whatever. You yes. need to go and get trained. By the way, we sent it to this guy called Mel. <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but that's, yeah, that it does happen. That does happen. People obviously having to, like, Chris Hemsworth was had to be six percent for for Iron Man, and so he had six percent body fat. Did he? Yeah, that's why he was that's really low. Up. Yeah, that's um, unhealthy low, though, right? Yeah, it's very hard to stay at that. Mm. But he had the chef with him, and so he he looked after himself. Great Nick, unbelievable Nick. To be fair, bad back, but great Nick. Oh, did you train him? Did you? I've trained. Oh, him, yeah, I didn't realise. Yeah, yeah. He, what was so? What weight was he at when he came in? Um, oh, not weight, not weight, body fat. Oh, he was feck all. No, he was he was already at that was stage he, when he's coming and training. Uh, but he right. just certain parts was, of the film and to be there in London. It was but, a main, maintenance thing. Yeah, but he, um, he he's a really good lad. There was one lady at a, a hotel when he was checking in with Stevie Walsh, and said, um, 
uh, she's, she was looking at him a little bit funny. She said, and he was like, yeah. She said, do, do I know you? He said, well, yeah. I'm, he was, when Iron Man was being promoted, he said, yeah, I'm here to promote my uh, my new like, blockbuster or whatever. And then she went, oh, hang on, you're neighbours, aren't you? And he went, yeah, 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 my neighbours. <laughs> Uh, why um so why are you so cutthroat with the clientele then? Um because I don't have time for negativity and they drain me. When you, what do you mean you don't have time? I don't have time for any negative people. You can't be asked with it. I no, because it, it drains me. Drains uh, you. Yeah, absolutely. Because you want to come on, let's go, let's fire up all the people I, like this morning I had a crew training. I was in Ireland the weekend. I so I didn't get to train them the Sunday crew. So the Sunday crew came this morning <coughs> and um they're all I've trained some of them for since I've retired. Ten years, twelve years there's lads and ladies there that are training they know this deal they know how to warm up they're into it lifting so I don't have to be eye on them 100% a little bit when they're technical lifts but otherwise they know what I expect when they come in and we have a chat and we have a crack and then they work their beans off and they get out they know how intense the session can be I throw them an odd curveball when it's all engine or a bit more strength or but there's a different session every time best bang for your buck on the day but if there there's an there's an odd one that mightn't fit in there you'd think because they're not working as hard as they should but they're all really good people i could have any one of my clients with pair with another one because if i couldn't have a cup of tea or have dinner with them or have a bit of crack with them i'm not training them simple as really yeah simple as that I trained everybody at the start yeah I'll get you down I'll train yeah come down and train you I don't want to train you I don't want to train you how do you break that news to someone I'm, I'm too busy I can't train you oh okay <laughs> the secret's out <laughs> have you ever been told no, that by no, Mel <laughs> no, no, actually one, one, one person that was so negative I'd say I'd smash them in a warm up I'd absolutely bury them in a warm up and they're like oh, you can see their face like fuck this is, this is tough and I said look we're nearly finished the warm up and they went the warm up I said yeah we're nearly finished the warm up I, and she went and this particular lady look I'm not for everybody and that little bomb was thrown in there to her head he's not for me you gave her the you gave her the out you gave her the out <laughs> look, didn't you I'm not you for everyone out. it's not you it's not you it's me it's not you it's not you it's me that's what it is isn't it not you it's me Listen. like it but when people say I need to get fit before I come to you I go oh, no you just come and you do the best you can every time that's all that's all I ask come do the best you can yeah I can see as a negative the thing is I'm just thinking you know, it's, your, it's your job isn't it and if you end up with a you could end if you're not policing it the way you are in terms of people oh, an hour I'm spending an hour with this yeah, person yeah you could end up with a bunch of people f- for a period of time you know over six months a year whatever and they just the I don't know let's say it's a, a significant percentage of your clientele are negative yes that'll bring you down I spent time around negative people for prolonged periods and it is it soul destroying literally yes. literally thank soul you soul destroying yeah. soul destroying and I'm I'm quite lively energy wise and I, I give energy to and, and I like the people that I train ideally have it, are successful in their own right so they have a bit of get up and go without me having to spoon feed them to get up and go so anybody that's like well known or they are, they're the same as anybody else but they're good at what they do so they know they can push themselves on they're the best ones to train mm. best ones to train but then if someone somebody obviously can be down they're not in the 100% if they come in and that, that's actually the, the thing I've said to a couple of trainers they say what would you what's the, what do you take away from like what's the one piece of advice is how are you today to, if you ask that person and you get to gauge I think maybe that that would be my my well I would say it's unique selling point but that's what you say it isn't it you go how are you today and you can gauge from today whether I can absolutely banjo you as in drill drill you for push you push you push you depending on what the last session was hold the session it's in a midland session or pull the session all together a couple of curls for the girls they go out feeling better we've had a chat had a bit of crack they feel better about themselves the long and short of it is when they come in they feel better going out whatever happens in between there they have to feel better going out that's 
Yeah, so <laughs> dynamically adjusting what you're going to do based on what you can, you can yeah. have a plan before they turn up. Yeah. But there's a there's a saying in the, in the army which is no plan survives contact. I'm sure you've heard it with some of the military friends. Yeah. No plan survives contact. You can have a plan, but as soon as the, the mission starts, yeah. you're probably going to go pear shaped. Something's yeah. going to be in there you didn't expect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. So positivity is key for me, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I it's the the outcome. Like this, this, this. It's a good point. Like the result you want is not always like the the, the obvious. The, what seems to be the obvious result, which is physical improvement. Yeah. You you want a you know, it's like you're playing a strategic game. Like I remember coming back off. Of, sorry, yeah, come no. back off of. I came back off of um, annual leave when I was serving, and uh, it'd be like three weeks off. And traditionally, over the three weeks when you're off over Christmas, no one does anything. You're supposed to keep ticking over. No one does anything. And at the time, I had my own platoon. We came back. <clears throat> You know when you think back, you think, oh, I could have done that differently. That was a bit of a dick thing to do. We came back the first day back from leave, and, like, and it, it would have been snowing. It was like three or four inches of snow on the floor. We went out for a run, and I took him on a 10-mile run. Like, knowing full well most people had not done anything over the three weeks. So a 10-mile run was going to be out of... It was going to be really, 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 really hard. In hindsight, totally the wrong thing to do. There was kickback about it. It wasn't taken well, you know, especially amongst the, the full screws who were me, who were, my, who were in the platoon, like the, 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 the team commanders, basically. Yes. It was like, well, that was... In, in, you know, afterwards, like, no, we shouldn't have done 10 miles there. In hindsight, no way, we shouldn't have. But, like, my inexperience in the whole thing, the long game is, should have been... As you were saying there, think for a run, make it challenging, not too challenging. Get them back, hard work, motivate them to go and get themselves fit and look for the next session. Think yes. the next session, not fucking destroy them yeah. like a morale hoover, which yeah. is basically what I went out and did. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, just, it's the same hoover. attitude, isn't it? Yeah. Morale hoover, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's the same attitude, isn't it? And um, that's what's going to say to you, morale hoovers. You get one morale hoover in the group, and it becomes infectious contagious doesn't it contagious the worm the, the yeah rots the, all the apples yeah do you ever did you ever experience that in your pro rugby career um or is it when, when you're younger against? um when you're younger you can i used to keep my head down and just try and get the respect for playing you know when you're training you diligently train and you play hard and you get a name for yourself for being a good player or that's I just wanted to do it that way you know I wouldn't uh, people are are spurned pretty quickly you know the lads that you've had in your needless say in, in groups of fellas that try and be the the life and soul of the party and like try and lead everything but they're not in the gang yet and the people are standoffish of them and you think oh god mm. you're going you're going balls out too quickly you just have to you have to bide your time with, with groups of fellas for me anyway you have to bide your time you have to to you know you have to view what's going on and then adjust your um actions accordingly so you're referring to leaders here new leaders yes no well they're, they're, they're fellas who try and make make a name for themselves too early before they've gained the respect of every anybody else around them they just like plow in and mm, I'm not sure about you you think you're you think you're all it before, before why do you think that out. happens um why do they do that? I don't know. Insecurity? Uh, they, mm, yeah, yes. They're, they're showing bravado stuff before and not being sure of themselves, for sure. But, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's happened a lot of times. Fellas who are, are good lads, <coughs> and let's say we've gone to uh, play rugby or something, and you see them trying to dominate the room, and they don't have the room, and you're thinking, Psh, pull the plug. <laughs> stop stop will you <laughs> yes yeah I know it's, it's um but lads lads do that shit don't they yeah I suppose as well pressure will change a man mm. or a woman pressure will change you and drive you to do some drive you to do things you wouldn't normally do positive yeah. or negative true you misjudge things feel like you gotta perform feel like you need to um artificially drive 
respect for yourself as opposed yes. to letting it grow organically. Yeah, that, that, that would be that. Mm. Yeah. I think there's more of it. I think there's more. The, more go on. It's, it's an awkward thing, though, isn't it? When you realise that someone is trying to do that and you're thinking, oh, no, that's not the way forward. I can see that you're, you're, you're struggling there. And you, you nearly say, look, you're all right, calm down. And you, go, and you see, you know, they're like, what do you mean? I've made a decision to be an arse. <laughs> yeah. But it seems to be backfiring. Yeah, I wonder if there's some if this sports more susceptible, team sports more susceptible to that than others. I'm more accepting of it. Again, I'm thinking of football. Just thinking of personalities, not specific people. But because there's so much money in it, that people are more tolerant of personality deficiencies in a lot. Of yes. Them. Because maybe as well, because there's less camaraderie involved. Okay. Well, when it's professional, and compared to football and rugby. Yeah. I'm not to be fair, when I, when, when I have chats with Rio and he talks about things that went on, there's some very similar, similar... Really? Yeah, for having the crack and taking the piss out of someone or, you know, th- there's a lot of that that goes on, needless to say, with, and making a jibe of someone or whatever. But there's, there's all, like, Rio, Rio would be a terrible one if he had something on you, you know what I mean? And he... <laughs> But he'd, he'd wind you up unbelievably. <laughs> Today, putting the weight on his, between his knees for his dips or whatever, he just kept putting his arse back. I said, what the, was like, what the fuck is he doing? His, right arse. his arse back. So I couldn't get me faking the weight in. He was like, bang. What the? Anyway, but um, yeah, but just a bit of crack. I mean, yeah, some fellas just, just they push it too soon, don't they? they? They think, I'm one of the lads... And it's a thing that's a very fine thing that you, it's, your judgment of a room is, is important, isn't it? What's the correct course of action then? I've, I've definitely been that person in the past. Insecurities, um, low, really low self-confidence, low self-esteem, and being in situations, like, like you yeah, played rugby all my life, yeah. and, and in situations where, Rightly or wrongly, I feel in. I felt in. Especially when I was really young. I felt yeah. inferior, and it's driven me to do things that to make prove. me not feel superior, yeah. but make me feel less inferior. Yes, you know, being the fucking joker. What? Yes, I, I'm, there's, there's parts of my personality now. I am, and and things I do and the way I behave, not badly, that I that I, I absolutely attribute to. They're, they're intrinsic parts of my personality now that I absolutely attribute to things that weren't intrinsic when I was younger. Yes. You know, the, the joker side of it, the extreme behavior side of things yeah. and attitudes that I've definitely still retained. And they're like core parts of me now. I just, I've just got them under control. <laughs> it's got them under you control. You keep that nailed down. <laughs> yeah, keep it nailed down, man. Don't let them out. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yes, you know I what do. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's hard to I mean it's hard to, when you if you have that if you feel like that and feel like you are less of X, Y, or Z thing aspect part of your personality or part of, of the in the social status and you feel like you need to be more for some reason like how do you how do you deal with that what's the correct approach yeah especially in male dominated environment male not do- not male dominant environments in in environments where it is heavy heavily um, masculine, full of strong personalities environments, rugby, which are in any contact sport. When when, when I was at Richmond initially, that's when the money first came into rugby, and the Quinells were there, Ben Clark, all these British lions, Alan Bateman. Welsh internationals, Argentinian internationals. I mean, it was like loaded with them. And then you think, (laughs) but you just, you did your job, you kept your head down. And then slowly, but but everybody's the same. That's uh, training people that are well known, just because they're successful at a job, they all sit down to shite. I mean, there's nobody any different. It's just because you've done well at a particular job and you've become successful, that's mag- mega, but you bring something to the to the room, but you're just the same as everybody else. Just be respectful, work hard, and be polite. Yeah.
over time people will you don't get on with everybody you're not going to get on with everybody but he's a nice person you know he does well he plays hard you get your you get your reputation he trains well you know he's diligent this, you get respect in well I did as a, as a player because I did my job simple as that you do you do what's expected don't you hmm yeah makes sense yeah I think also it's a, a change in perspective of how you of how you view yourself I think you know as a, as a new person walking into some things some yeah. team I think especially for I was going to say weaker minded then but not I think especially for people who are more inclined to be a little less uh, more insecure than average right more in a new situation then you you can have this perception that people can see that they see you as weak or see you as less than them because you're the new thing when I think in actual fact when you walk in you're an unknown mm. they're probably as insecure about what you could or couldn't be as you are about being what, the team like you, who yeah. the fuck is this guy yes he looks like he looks like he looks X, Y, Z. he looks yeah. young or he looks oh he looks strong he looks fast he looks whatever <clears throat> I wonder what he's going to be like that's the actual perception there yes. they've got as little knowledge of you as you have of them mm. I think once you weigh that balance up in your head then you realise you're starting off on an even play you're starting off on an even playing field and then in your next move your next move is your first move is what makes it or breaks it if you're, if you're like you like you said if you're the one standing up trying to be Mr. Loudmouth and crack all the jokes and be the or, or, or give all the advice and be the, the the fucking the the biggest ego in the room straight away as yes. the unknown creates a problem right yeah because then you're a threat immediately you perceive as a threat who's this guy coming in and trying to be this X, Y, or Z or this girl yes when we don't know him or her from Adam yeah right yeah that doesn't go down well no I mean, no <laughs> that doesn't no. go down well no yeah who, who are you <laughs> yeah who's this guy yeah but even but see the, the, even the lads that are, would have been like world class coming into a a team they have respect they go how you doing yeah I'm such a you know like Mertz when Andrew Mertens was an all black <clears throat> phenomenal all black came to Harlequins and um, he was respectful, even though he was a loose cannon when we'd be out in the town. But what a player. What an unbelievable player. Skills added to everybody, helped everybody. Was just a brilliant all-round person to have in the club. Brilliant. And he's actually, he's like, his, um, his little party trick was he could say in 28 languages I'm sorry I can't speak your language right <laughs> so he, he'd been in airport it's unbelievable it's, it's such an icebreaker he says excuse me where are you from and they say oh Poland and he go bang and he'd say it in Polish and then I'm sorry I don't speak your language and then they go but you just spoke our language. <laughs> you know he said that for everyone. that was the icebreaker but 28 languages I couldn't name 28 languages no, that's on. true yeah that's yeah. Uh, that's uh Oh, he's impressive. I wonder yeah. what motivated him to do that. I know, but he's, he's a great lad, really. And an un such a skillful player and all around superstar. What do, what do you think puts smaller nations. What do you think. Who, why do you think there's a, the reason that smaller nations are so capable in rugby compared to the bigger nations? Smaller places where you've got smaller pools of Talent. population yeah. to draw from are greater. Are greater on average than they, than they should be. Specifically, Ireland. I can't say Wales in a minute because we ain't doing it. But <laughs> specifically, and consistently so. Consistently yes. so. Ireland, New Zealand, two prime examples. Yes. Fiji, prime example. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, where else? I, well, the, the, let's start with those three. What do you think? Why do you think they're different? How are they doing it? New Zealand's a batshit crazy. They love it, though. Bad shit, I know, but still, small it. talent pool, mate. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, it's, you true. can't blame genetics, right? Because rugby hasn't been around long enough for the change. Well, maybe ask, but what do you think? Um, I don't know. I think the. It's a bit broad term, but the Irish are definitely had a bit more 
for when we were playing it's funny when I was playing at Wasps as a youngster as from under 16 to 21 I played at Wasps and <clears throat> they'd you know you'd be playing against an Irish team in Dublin or whatever and so you'd hear the the Irish lads saying let's like fuck these English lads up and the English lads at Wasps saying let's fuck these Irish lads over <laughs> you know so and I'm Irish in the England team in an English side you know and so I had all those but the Irish wouldn't have had the talent back in the day but would have had the dog definitely have the dog the Irish have a have a bit in them that's a bit it's actually a, some some of the Irish personalities can be spiteful but that what do you mean I, uh, joking why some of the Irish have a bit of a bite to them that's that's not uh, in England you know, the fun, the laughter is a bit more jolly jolly but in Ireland they can be there's a bit more of a stab to it a joke a humour and I think that freaking perforates into team sports to the Irish can be dogged like absolutely dogged not give up kind of but now the skill level is so much better that that combined with the dog, I think, is a, is very potent. And, he, and on the setup, obviously, with the grassroots stuff is all that coming through. But back in the day, that would be Irish. You couldn't you couldn't dismiss the Irish because they had such a, a an iron fist mindset. Yeah, again. mindset again. Yeah. What about what about the Kiwis? Um, well, yeah, they're they're savage to be fair as well, aren't they? They're, they're there's only four. How many million? There's only f- five million now in Ireland. Yeah. Well, in Ireland. Yeah, in Ireland, but so it's something similar in New Zealand, was it? What? That's the population of Ireland. Uh, uh, five, five million. million yeah. No. Yeah. Is it that small? That few? I didn't realise that. Yeah. I interviewed a, uh, a Kiwi international. He played for Bath. Uh, play for Bath play for New Zealand oh I'm crap with names I wouldn't, oh, I wouldn't uh, be asking not me. Dan not Dan Brian 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 someone I can't remember <laughs> uh, <I'll>, sorry <laughs> sorry Brian I'm talking about he uh, no, I, I didn't interview him I'm talking rubbish I didn't interview him we got him for a Q&A for Forces yes. Barbarians right got him in for that he got asked the same question about the Kiwis and his main answer was down to, it's basically down to tactical if you want to call it that he said from from grassroots age playing rugby there they taught evasive rugby it's avoid the tackle not take the tackle yes and here England Wales I can't speak for Ireland but it's you take the tackle you go through the faces whereas there yeah. they taught instinctively evade the tackle yeah. which kind of makes sense kind of sure. makes sense I can't see it only being that yeah no that, that's very difficult <laughs> when the young lads can't pass but that's what they're, they're trying to uh, initially when the younger younger they take the ball in so they get used to uh, a re- recycling the ball and they pass and they take it in and they recycle obviously that's a handy way for the, the youngsters to learn the, the phases of rugby but all the different lines are running the the New Zealanders are love their touch rugby and their tag rugby, don't they? They all they, they play mixed games all together, so their handling is that excellent handling. The other thing they do um, is on their on their age ranges, they don't group the players together at youth level based on age. Weight. It's weight. Yeah genius yeah I know. total common sense but genius but if you look at well the, it's probably leveled up and now but maybe 10 years ago if you looked at the the props forwards anyway passing in a warm up like if they're making wide passes they wouldn't necessarily be the most brilliant passers but if you look at the New Zealand boys warming up years ago they fizz the ball even if you're a prop uh, second row and they wouldn't necessarily be deemed the most um, player players you know the winner when you don't have to have a prop he's gonna he's not gonna have the ball in his hands very often he's gonna scrummage he's gonna truck it up once or time twice in in your mind that's how it would happen in the game but if you watch them warming up they're like unbelievable passes of the ball the, the all blacks were but I remember looking at the warm-up going 
Jesus, they can all pass like a proper massive pass, like a bullet, you know, so the skill level was that bit higher, I would say. But I think it's, it's leveled out a good bit now. Mm, that is a Pacific Islanders, Pacific Islanders ism, isn't it? With that that style of free flowing, free passing yeah. play, uh, which is, which fascinates me, especially you see with the Fiji and Samoans, yeah, all the time. It's like they play. It's like they've got the ability to bring the seventh style of rugby into fifteens. Yes, when we start playing like that, it's just magic. Yeah, it's lovely to watch that, isn't it? Yeah, steppers, lovely hands, outrageous feet. It's lovely to watch. It's not lovely to play against. No, it's not. <laughs> no. That's horrible to play against. Yeah, absolutely. I remember Peach telling me a story when he was playing. He's a Augustine Pichot. Is he used to play with me at Richmond. He was an Argentine captain, but he was playing sevens Argentina versus Fiji one time, and he said. Serevi broke through who's a legend Serevi in sevens and Peach was like chasing he was the he was the sweeper and he was thinking oh my god I'm going to get absolutely turned inside out so he just threw himself one direction and Serevi obviously had bamboozled himself and like f- fell over the top of Peach <laughs> like for an unbelievable tackle and Peach wasn't known as a tackler at all and Peach uh, I don't know how I don't, he, he, he fell over me <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah Serevi would turn people inside out and so calm so calm mm, yeah time on the ball is a, is a good player isn't it you, that's when when someone has a lot of time on the ball yeah yeah come back to the PT and how does it uh, so when did you I saw that so I, funny enough, when we met, I didn't realise you had a, what should we call it, a good online presence already. Um, and I'm glad I didn't realise that, because this, the, you, you invited on you without me knowing that. So, okay, so that's good. So got a, de- a good reason, because we were chatting well at, at, the, at that event. Um, but when, when did you start getting more of an online presence? Was it because I saw it picked up last year? Who was it? Oh, I think Vorderman mentioned you in an article, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that when the, um, the like the things started picking up in terms of your people's awareness of you, public awareness of you online, um, or was it before that? Probably Rio was a was a, a big Rio, one. right? Okay. But I trained Catherine Jenkins a while ago. I went to school with yeah. Catherine Jenkins. Did you? Yeah really yeah well she um, I trained her for a good while um, and then the people say oh he trained her but he did, didn't you don't see them like saying anything about them or anything like that so maybe he'll keep his mouth shut or whatever and then I trained Gabby and Kirsty and then Niall Horan and Jamie Dornan and Chris Hemsworth and so you get to just does it make it more challenging where, uh, when that that with that kind of publicity it's brought with it awareness no I don't mean from a I don't mean from a business perspective I mean from um, trying to carry on doing things the way you like to do them the way you like to talk and the relationships you like to have yes no is the answer because it sounds like you're much more you're much more uh, personable and emotionally connected with the clientele you have. Yes, and that's what you expect compared yes. to Joe Average PT. Yes, right. Is that fair yes. to say? Yes, that would be fair to say. So, what that's challenges does that wrong. bring with it? Um, uh, no, well, I put time into them because you spend an hour with them. You, you, you invest time. How, how are you? How will? And then you know how their family are and their kids are and what issues they have. Obviously, I'm like a like a hairdresser for listening to chat or whatever, you know, good times for people and bad times with people and what advice I could possibly give to some people in their realm of knowledge. I, I lend an ear and if it was me, I, if I'm asking information of someone, I always, always ask, if you were, if you were me and that's their realm of knowledge what would you do in this situation you know if I'm I ask if I'm if I have no clue of what I'm buying or whatever I say what would you do I always like flip it on them and 
if I'm chatting away with somebody, I, I always tell them how I feel regarding their situation. When do you start developing that skill? Because that's, that's not something even Joe Bloggs has. The ability to empathise yeah. and give a fuck about what, what people are saying and to value what they're saying. Uh, Did you? St- I, I mean, from a PT perspective, because yeah. I, I can't imagine you doing that when you were fifteen, training the lady who wanted to go to the police cadets. Um, um, I don't know. I always had an interest in people, and and needless to say, everyone tell, ask, says I'm like, like the king of small talk. But if you you grow up in a pub, yeah, true. <laughs> how are you keeping? Yeah, it? yeah. How's yeah. your day? What have you been at? That's a good Any point. news? Any scandal? You know, any of that stuff. But. Um, I'm obviously I'm not making champ but some some people are trying to be professionals but generally the people are training day to day they just want to look good and they want to feel good and that's part of it and if you go in and you've maybe spoken about something you wanted to speak about and to to, to somebody that's not directly involved with your family I'm far enough away but I still not have time for you even though some of the time you know they're paying for the time but they're paying for me to tell them how to lift not to give them advice on anything and obviously they did laugh I would not take advice from you because I'm a moron you know because I'm, I'm I'm silly and we laugh a lot And but I mean there's obviously there's, 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 there's a person behind the clown you know what I mean I'm needless to say I want people to laugh their balls off when they come and train with me and they sweat themselves and they're they're goose when they leave me and they had a good time and all that and they feel a million dollars but I don't know maybe they they feel like they've had a a good chat as well because I love chatting to people I love knowing the ins and outs and if I can help I I, I always help people hmm I think I think it makes sense as well with that I think the value in that because it's probably I don't know you can probably speak for this but I would imagine that there's been a, a huge ramp up in the people who think they are PTs or they want to get into that industry and all of a sudden they start training people because I don't know X, Y, Z qualification mm. and also want to make money easily and on the side and not doing it full time as an example it's the same as any industry at the minute isn't it it's so easy to it, at the minute it seems like it's so easy to be able to do anything yeah do everything I do everything yes yeah but do everything doing it well is just as hard as it was <laughs> yeah, well is arguably true. harder because yes. the market is saturated yes actually actually, one one person messaged me about how did you get you like famous people I said what do you, what do you mean how do you how do you get the famous people I said but they're the same as any other person they're just known for their job so that it's just a normal person just get a normal person that's positive yeah but they're famous oh god yeah <laughs> and, <laughs> but I, I treat everybody the same I treat everybody the same and I think that's that's why people come to me people are chasing the TikTok likes and the Instagram likes that's the problem they get clouded by that as opposed to trying to deliver just yeah. a normal good service to anyone job block like mm-hmm. again it goes for any, any industry and it clouds a lot of people like like when we were uh, it was earlier earlier in the podcast it was on the icebreaker before. <laughs> we were talking about TikTok and Instagram influencing how people want to train and what, they, what they're what training for yes and one of the good things that's come about off of social media social media existing I think is that more people I think more people are being driven to be physically fit yes it may be for the wrong reasons, like they go into the gym because they want to get a good video. Literally, go to the gym. Tripod up. To get a good video <laughs> yeah. of them doing some exercise because they saw some influencer on Instagram or TikTok. Or yes. But I think even that's all right because they're going to the gym. Yeah. It's like they're going to the gym. Whatever they're doing they're to get to moving. Yeah, 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 whatever's going to be moving. You can't really argue with it. You can't, can you? Unless, no. you know, unless all of a sudden in 10, 15 years, you're going to see an epidemic of hip flexor injuries. Or, <laughs> <laughs> you know? or, or, or backs. Or you backs. See, I see a lot of backs, yeah, backs that are dodgy. Yeah. You can't, I can't look at some lifts. Oh, God, it's brutal. Well, what about, uh, what do you think about CrossFit? Um, well, I, I do CrossFit. Um, I, I like, I enjoy CrossFit. But I think the the strength is its weakness. Just like a superhero, the strength is the weakness. What do you mean? The, the um, tagline, every second counts, means your intensity is going to be 
top of the pops it's going to be max isn't it mm -hmm. but with Olympic lifting that can't be done time and time and time and time and time again unless you are strong as and your techers is spot on and then they, so they start to try and flay up terrible weights and then the technique goes bang your back is in giblets you know there's so many people have said to me I, lo I loved CrossFit but I burst my back and I burst a the thing I, sorry that's why I yeah. ask because I just see when I think about CrossFit I think oh my god injuries I just think injuries bad form lots of weight injuries but it's been around that long now I would have thought the the issue would have been identified and control measures brought in to mitigate, mitigate against that. But, but the coaching is great. Okay. You know, the, the coaches are, I've, I've, I've a lot of, I've seen, come across a lot of good coaches, but um, that, that every second count, people are trying to smash through them and then come on and it's great that you're working hard, but then Jesus, the technique is going to shite and then you're not stopped. You know, it's like, well, I'm not letting you do that anymore. We're going to pull the weight. Well, some would, but let's pull the weight or let's raise the bar or let's do something else to, to minimize any issues. That's why it, it gets a bad rep. Mm. Yeah, I like that in any, any sport. I think. Yeah. Definitely, but I, I I love the intensity of it. I um yeah I train with a fella I used to play rugby with at university out in Sunbury. Really good, really good box. Really busy, it's a great spot. Lovely people. Yeah, I enjoy mm -hmm. it. Tearing into sessions, getting a beat on has to be done. Yeah, yeah. I might re revisit some of it. Maybe I like the intensity of it. Yes, yeah, for sure. Like the intensity, of but it. then if you if you're not if you feel your techers could be a little bit, just put it doesn't have to be RX. It doesn't have to be the required weight. You can you pull it, just fire them out. Mm. You don't have to don't get caught in that the old ego lifting. Yeah. You don't need that. Ego lifting. Yeah. One of the amazing things that has, has done it and, and demonstrated is how important having a good community of like-minded people trying mm. to do the same thing and yes. that you know bringing people together okay community yeah like, and high rocks is your, it's a high, high yes high rocks right? yeah i got a friend who uh, i got a friend who well, he did a bit of crossfit i think he was he was um a competitive um power lifter i think when he was younger he's not that he's old he's fucking late 20s uh, <laughs> he's younger um and, and now he's got the high rocks and it's it's become the core aspect of his social life he goes there, works out in the morning. They're doing shit all the time with each other. Yeah. Weekends, evenings, different different segments of the gym. And that's like awesome. Yeah. It sounds a bit culty, but it's, it's like, it, yeah. it, it's awesome. You know, that's, um, that's the power of community, I suppose. Yeah. Been a pleasure, mate. Been a pleasure. Thank what you very we, much uh, indeed. Have we, what, have we not covered anything that you wanted to cover? I think we've done it all, mate. Yeah, I think we have. Well done, Batman. Well, well done, me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a pleasure, mate. I'm glad. It's, you know, it's great, great to meet you. And you. And, um, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we connected up. And um, like I said, I'm sure you and my cousin Steve have crossed paths somewhere. I'll be astounded. I, I, I'll, I'll have a message back from later on. It probably, maybe a no, but it's too many similarities. Yes. And, t and, and things. I think. I think. Uh, yeah, it's like, a, and it's a small case, world. It's, it's a small world. Well, yeah. It's only five million, mate. <laughs> Very but, um, good. How can people follow you to uh, see what you're doing? Um, uh, I'm on Instagram, Meldeen12. Um, and if they want to train a bit, just let me know. And the website's Meldeen. Uh, Mel, Meldeen. Uh, yeah, Meldeen.co.uk. Great. Good pleasure, mate. Good luck. Thank you tremendously. Nice one. Ledge.